Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're going to take a look at all the other stuff that comes with the Lords of Hellas. Now I played Lords of Hellas last year, really enjoyed it, super fun game. So today we're just going to take a look and see what's in the boxes of the other stuff. We have the Lords of the Sun expansion, we have the Atlas expansion, we have the City of Steel expansion, and the Warlord box. Alright, so this is not going to be a full on review, I've not seen all of this stuff yet. But we're just going to look inside each box and kind of see what's in in case you come across any of this stuff and you want to get it. And then at the end, let's see if we can fit it all into a smaller group setting. We'll see. So the Atlas expansion comes with two different ways to use Atlas. And both of them, you're going to be taking this board and putting it on top of Atlas. It does not sit as nicely as I'd like it to, but I think that's because the Atlas model is slightly, mine is slightly warped on the bottom. It's a really cool looking model though. You can see here with multiple faces and what you'll be doing in the different scenarios is you'll be sending hoplites to go stand in his base. You'll be doing this from port tokens that are placed on the board. So the port tokens will be placed in certain areas. Sometimes the number matters because you want to be the first to get here. And in the one scenario, you're going to get golden apples that you can use in combat or to heal people. And in the other scenario, uh, you're going to try to stop this guy from destroying everyone. And if you do, whoever has most hoplites here is the winner of the game. So it's like an alternate game ending thing. So this is something that is, you know, requires extra rules. But whoever has the most hoplites there in one scenario, you'll take your, you get this token here and you put it somewhere and it gives you an extra, uh, an extra number in that area. So there's a reason to fight over this, this guy. I don't know that I'm going to use this all the time, but man, it is a really cool model. So now we have the Lord of the Sun expansion. This adds a, another monument. You can have Apollo being one of the monuments, just replacing a monument and build him like normal. And you got a bunch of favor of Apollo type cards to get if you do that. But you can also play with muses. So the muses are like a hero. There's a color base for each of them, for all six colors. And the first time that you send a priest to where Apollo is, you're going to take one of these cards here, and two of them are going to be face up. And there's different cards. And you'll this will basically affect, so if I take Polymia, for example, if I'm the defender, I can recruit a hoplite before any battle taking place in any region that, that she's in. And I can move her around now as one of my actions, and their movement for these muses is the same as your hero. So here, after winning a battle in any region that you're in, take the glory token of that land. Or here, instead of moving Irado, you can recruit a hoplite in any one region you control in this land. So they kind of give you some special abilities. Um, this is, I don't know, I don't know how often I'll use the um, as an extra monument, but the muse thing I can see, it gives you another option. It's going to add a slight bit of complexity to the game, but I, I like it. All right, now I'm knee-deep into this Warlord box, and there's a lot going on in here. So we'll start with some simple stuff. We have three new monuments. So this makes four that we've seen total now. Each of these uh, guys comes with their own kind of rule set that you can use. So, for example, we have... Uh, the one guy who has constructs that he uses in the game. And then Hades, who has a little underworld board. And then this guy here. But you can ignore them and just play with them as a simple mode, which is the way I recommend. Hey, it's more monuments, and so it just tells you which one it replaces. Replace Zeus with Hades. Replace Zeus, I think, do all three of them replace Zeus? I'm not quite sure. But, there, yes, uh, Poseidon, uh, he replaces... Athena. Okay. I don't think it really matters which one replaces which one, right? But then they have their own, like Poseidon has fleets and things like that. So they each have their own module that you can play with, but I would prefer just to play with them as extra stuff. And they each come with their own artifact and their own set of blessings. And this is what makes the game interesting, the different blessings that are included with the game. So the other things, there's a Pandora's box. I'm not going to spoil it, but you can open it or not. You know what happens when you open Pandora's box. More combat cards, more event cards, more relics cards. Um, and then a whole set of stuff for Kronos. Now, Kronos is this massively evil, huge miniature. I mean, it makes the monuments. I mean, here's the next to the monuments. Much bigger than they are. It comes with its own board. You can have one person play it. It's its own set of rules. It highly recommends that you only play this uh, if you're advanced. Also inside this set, we have Cassandra, and Cleito, and Leonidas, and Odysseus, so way more heroes. The purple faction, you can play now with a fifth player, 
There is extra boards for such things. This is for the sixth player. And then the fifth player board. So there's a whole lot of extra uh, stuff. There are more monsters that are included in this box too. I mean, this box has a ton of things inside it. So you might want to see a close up look of some of these monsters. They look really cool. I mean, look at this thing. It's a dragon with guns. So see if there's some of the monsters that are included in here. There is, and then uh, there's the purple faction. This one actually comes with its own plastic inserts. You can see the plastic, the purple faction here. Here's the new heroes that are included with the game. Uh, so many different things in here. Favor of the gods and such. There's just a lot of pieces involved in this box. So I'm just going to jump because I don't, you know, we're going to jump right over to the City of Steel box. And inside this one is another hero. So in here we have Hector which is great and we have another color and then you have stuff that can only be used if you're playing with the other expansions you have this giant wall that can be put out we have army upgrades here that can be played uh, in battle and you can see the army upgrades are color coordinated and then a couple more monsters that are included in that set also Whew, so much stuff here let's see now if I can fit it all in the box All right, I did it. I got everything in the two boxes with room to spare. Um, I had to put all the miniatures in the big box and mostly base game stuff in here. So I'm very excited about all this. I'm not likely gonna play the fifth and sixth player expansion. I already think Lords of Hellas makes a fantastic three player game and a decent four. I think it will, the, the downtime will go up considerably on the five to six. Will I play with the new statues? Oh my goodness, yes. I'll switch those out all the time. There's seven of them now. That's a nice change of pace. It take combos of three. I would go so far as to even say, I don't even care if I put, if they replace the exact same one. Having more monsters is good, although a couple monsters only work on the expansion board, so you have to keep an eye out for that. Having more combat cards, and then there's all the different modules. So I, what is it, like five different modules now that you can play with included. So there's, we're good. I was already pretty happy with the base game. I just sat around and saying, I wish there was a few more monsters and a few monuments to switch them in and out. I got it now. So that's fantastic. I'm glad to see all this stuff. Um, this Lords of Hell is a fantastic game. This is going to only make it better.